Megan and this is Elizabeth and we're here for today's Zoo to You brought to you by MIFA on behalf of the U Fund College Investing Plan. And today we are outside here on this little bit chilly but sunny of a day in our Franklin farm with our Dexter cattle. So our first one coming closest to us is Quinn. Quinn just turned two last week. And then the smaller one behind him is DJ. Uh, DJ will be turning one coming up in March. But the, these guys are brothers. Uh, they have recently arrived here from a farm in New York. So these guys are actually quarantining right here in this part of the barn. Um, and after they finish completing all their physicals, and make sure that they are healthy. They will be joining the rest of our barnyard animals, our goats and our pony and the guinea hogs that you guys got to meet last week. So today uh, we will learn about these guys and we will also hopefully get to see a little bit of a training session. Uh, Elizabeth is working on getting them to come closer so we can station them and target them. But, so it looks like DJ might want to. They seem to really in like enjoy their snacks. <laughs> Hi DJ. <laughs> so Dexter cattle are from Ireland originally. These guys are a heritage breed. Uh, as you guys learned last week with the guinea hogs. So they go back a long, long time ago in history and have a long genetic history and have been bred on farms for a very long time and they slowly were introduced to the U.S. back in the early 1900s and on the farm these guys will be raised uh, for milk production or like beef production um, but here we're not using them for that we get to use them to learn about Dexter cattle so as you can see, this is DJ's station, and then that is also his target pole. And when they're standing here, we can reward them with a variety of snacks. Uh, these guys really like sweet potato, they like carrots, we've tried celery and pear. Uh, they really enjoy bananas and they'll eat the whole peel too. <laughs> and then they also get what's called hay stretcher, which is basically just a cube of smushed up hay. And that's something that they get every day as part of their diet along with a sweet grain. But the majority of their diet is hay. So they'll get Timothy hay, they'll eat a good bale plus a day, and they'll just munch on it. These guys are ruminants, so they have that four-part stomach where they'll break down all that hay and all the grasses. So out in the wild, if you ever see them in their native territories or on a farm, they could be in a pasture and just munching away, browsing on all the grasses. It's pretty much what they like to do all day long. <laughs> So if you have any questions uh, during this chat, feel free to put those in the chat box. We'll do our best to answer those. <laughs> so you can see some great training that we've started so far. And other training that we will do here is put a halter on them, walk them and move them to hold them for grooming. So these guys can get brushed every day as part of their care and we'll check their hooves to make sure they're growing properly and they don't need any trimming or anything. Um, but it's good to practice like the haltering and getting them used to us and being comfortable because uh, we don't want to spook them. We don't want them kicking or hurting themselves or slipping. Uh, so right now we are in the process of haltering and DJ is doing really good and Quinn, as you can see, he's a little bit more shy around people, but he's made lots of progress since he's come and uh, we can put the halter just uh, like along his nose now. 
But so as I mentioned, these guys are younger. They're only about one and two years old. So you can see Quinn is bigger. His horns have grown in more. Um, and so Quinn is probably about the size, like how tall they will get, but they will fill out more around their bellies. Uh, these guys will weigh like 600 pounds up to, so they uh, have not been weighed since they've arrived here, uh, but we can put them on like a platform scale that they can just walk right onto. And we'll be able to keep track of their weights, make sure that they're growing at a healthy rate since they are young. Uh, but these guys can live up to 25 years old and they will breed for 15 years roughly of their lifespan. So it's awesome that these guys are young so we will see them for quite a while here in the Franklin farm. <laughs> they have a very very long tongue that you can see they stick out a lot and they'll clear out their noses sometimes and um, it kind of rolls a little bit if you see them stick out their tongue again when they eat the food <laughs> uh, what do you like to provide them for enrichment yeah, so these guys, so far we have learned that they love barrels and they love pushing around buckets. Uh, so they have those like big horns that they can grab onto like barrels and they can like push them with their heads and toss them in the air. So it looks like it might be on the other side of their barn right now, but they do have a white barrel in there. And sometimes it becomes a little game when we're changing their waters out that they decide to start trying to play with the water buckets. <laughs> we had a uh, question open up in the chat from Chris. Sure. Uh, he asked, do they have access to more paddock area than the former Point Two paddock? Uh, so yes, this right now goes around the back of the barn. But as I mentioned that this is also a quarantine space for them. So we quarantine them uh, for, I want to say roughly 60 days. But as long as all their tests and blood work come back normal and their fecals come back normal from any parasites, so it could potentially be a little bit longer. Uh, so this is not their permanent location. Uh, they'll be moving to a larger pasture, which is gonna be um, kind of behind our main barn area. So they'll have like access to fresh grass and stuff that they can graze throughout the day. Uh, we like to call it our new corral. And our donkeys are up in our upper corral now, little, and are giving them some more space. Awesome. <laughs> so it'll be good. Uh, cows, we like to work in a cattle chute, or here we have what we call stocks. And it's just kind of this little chute system that we can walk them right into and close the door. Um, kind of like how their feed doors are set up so we can open and close them. So it's helpful if we ever need to access like a certain part of their leg or their belly area. Uh, so even though they might be living up in this new corral, you'll be able to see uh, any of the zookeepers walking them down into our stocks every day or at least a few times a week just to practice and make sure that they stay comfortable. So you'll definitely see them around. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, so thank you guys for joining us to today's Zoo to You, brought to you by MIFA on behalf of the U Fund College Investing Plans.